Traders Talk with Lady Rochelle. PBM Radio Chicago, a service of Urban Broadcast Media. Thanks for sharing. Don't forget to share the video and invite people in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome to Warriors Talk Relator Rochelle here on UBM Radio, your station for faith, talk, and music. It is Motivational Monday. And I am encouraging you to follow me on all forms of social media, Facebook slash Warriors Talk with the Ness. I'm on Twitter, Periscope, and Instagram at Warriors Talk One on all three. You can email me at Warriors Talk One at gmail.com. You can check out the website for all up and coming events, um, present guests, past guests. You can go to www.warriorstalk.org. Check it out. If you ever miss a live broadcast of the show, please go to Spreaker.com, and that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Follow me, and I will follow you back. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Warriors Talk Relator Rochelle for Eyes on the Community. And this is me as I attend different events around the community as it relates to health and other information that I feel that's important to your health. So again, go to my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle. You can always call in at 312-754-4333, and we would love to hear from you. I'd like to highlight my sponsors because they are responsible for me going live week after week. We have Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, and that's with my pastor, Michael Richardson. And we are located on the west side of Chicago, 3058 West Van Buren in Chicago. You can go to our website at www.emanuelcogic.com for more service information. And at Emmanuel, we are building upon a solid foundation. My other sponsor is Paula Kelly with Allstate, and she's located at 297 East Glenwood Lansing Road in Glenwood, Illinois. And you can go to Paula Kelly at Allstate.com and she specializes in all of your insurance needs. We have Candace Lucas with RID Alert and it's RID Alert. She's located at 5660 West Madison Street in Chicago. You can go to RIDAlert.com. She is an online in-store solution for all of your quality pest control needs. We have Mary Kay with Gloria Dotson for all of your beauty products. She caters to you from head to toe. You can go to MaryKay.com slash G-D-O-T-S-O-N. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and I just would like to wish every mother a happy um, belated Mother's Day. And we know that you don't necessarily have to give birth to be a mother. So if you are a stepmom, a godmother, if you are a surrogate mother, if you are a, a grandmother who's raising um, grandkids, if you have poured into any young person in any kind of way, then Mother's Day is all about you, and I salute you on today. Our healing verse is coming from Proverbs 31 and 30. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. 
And then we have Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And we know that God has not given us the spirit of fear. We know that knowledge is power, and we know that knowledge is also the antidote to fear. So the information that you're going to receive today is going to be very impactful for your overall health as it relates to a person who is done with their breast cancer treatment. Today's show is all about teaching you how to eat healthy moving forward. Because we know that when we um, are done with treatment, those of you who have been through treatment or you have someone who um, you have taken care of if you was a caregiver, we know that they normally don't give us instructions. They do not give us detailed instructions about what to do once you're done with the treatment. Hello, First Lady Kelly. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Hey, Angel. Thank you for tuning in. My Leah. Hey, Annette. Hey, Dory. I just want to recognize you all. Hey, Janice. Everybody, wow. Um, I have a moment to do that. Thank you guys for tuning in. I encourage you to please share the video. And on top of sharing the video, if you know someone that would benefit from this information, please don't, don't be afraid to go ahead and send that um, link over to someone so that they can join in and get this important information. Because although um, you may not have went through breast cancer yourself, you may know someone who has. We all know someone who has been down this journey or who is currently going down this road. So it's important for us to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and we are passing along this information. So make sure that you do that. So right now we're in the third week of our Phenomenal Women series. And um, I'm, very, I'm very honored that I have had um, Phenomenal Women so far on the show. We're in the third week, and the first week we talked to um, Sisters Working It Out with LaRonda Witherspoon, and they are a health um, advocacy in motion where they connect um, breast cancer patients and cancer patients with all kind of resources. So any resources that you need, they connect you to those resources. They, She mentioned that they will take you by the hand, they will help you make appointments, and they will also help you funnel through getting financial assistance as well. Because we know going through um, any type of cancer situation that sometimes the treatment can leave you straining for cash um, with co-pays, um, getting your medicine, just the, trying to eat right. And today's show is all about um, helping you make better selections so that you can have a better outcome and you can um, turn your situation around and have a healthier life. And so week two, we talked to um, Dr. Landa Lee Sam, AKA Doc Star, and she talked about the unadulterated truth on women's health. And she was, she was awesome, let me tell you. When she was done with that broadcast, she literally gave, um, went and had a delivery. The birth came 30 minutes after the show. She sent me pictures um, of her blowing up the tub where the lady um, had the baby and she sent pictures of the brand new princess and so I just commend her for even taking time out of her busy schedule to go ahead and give us some important information on the unadulterated truth about women's health because we know as women we're taking care of everybody everybody else but ourselves we tend to put ourselves on the back burner and then once that happened, we're missing appointments, we're pushing everybody else to do everything else, and then we're sick because we're taking care of everybody else. But I'm encouraging every woman that's, on, that's listening to the show, if you're a man that's listening to the show, and you have a woman in your life, encourage her to go to the doctor, encourage her to get the mammograms, get the pep smears, anything you know that's a milestone in your life and you have reached that milestone age then you should be getting these things taken care of especially for the men as well because we know they do not like to go to the doctor so we want to make sure that we're pushing each other and we're pushing each other in love because what we want is we want to be around for a long time so that we can enjoy each other and we want to enjoy each other healthy so the information you're going to receive today is going to help you to select better food options when you are going through the cancer treatment and when you are done with the cancer treatment. I can remember when I was done, my doctor told me, she just said, eat clean and um, stay healthy at least 30 minutes a day. Like, that was really not instructions to me at all. 
they give you a lot of instructions when you go into the cancer treatment. Let me tell you, you're like in a tunnel and everything is moving really fast. And it's moving so fast, by the time you're done with the cancer treatment and they push you out on your own, you feel like you're hanging off of a cliff because now you feel like you don't have a direction because before everybody was um, making appointments for you it was appointment after appointment and you had um, treatment if you did chemo you know those were maybe coming every week or every two weeks if you was doing radiation radiation is every single week and so now you're left to figure out what to do so just as well as they hurry up and get you into treatment when you're done with treatment there should be a plan when you're done with treatment a plan on okay what steps do we take to now process that I'm done with treatment and I have to transition into being a survivor or as they would call it in remission but we, we don't say remission we say healed and so once you're done with the treatment you have to set up a plan for yourself basically as to what you're going to do eating right exercising maintaining your weight all of those are things that we should be doing on a normal everyday basis but sometimes we get lazy and we get lazy because we're busy with everyday things and sometimes exercising um, don't fit into the schedule and when we're eating we're eating out because we're always on the go but I'm going to encourage you to stop take time to take care of yourself and so I'm just going to give you a couple of foods that we can use to help us whether you're in a cancer journey or whether you're out of a cancer journey and so one of the, um, they call them superfoods, super, foods, super um, anti-cancer fighting foods, um, would be soy. And although soy has been questioned in the past if it was harmful or impactful for your health, but they're saying that um, studies have been done and it is nutritional for women who are going through breast cancer treatment or if you're done with breast cancer treatment. Um, it says the American Cancer Society is more cautious when it recommends noting that soy is a good source of alternative protein. Women with breast cancer should only take amounts in moderation. Everything is in moderation. They don't recommend soy peels, soy powder, or any type of soy supplement. It's saying that you don't get the nutritional benefits from those but eating it from natural products, you do. So we have to make sure that mo the things that we're putting in our body are natural. Also, it's like you're going through like a plant-based diet, but not really a plant-based diet, but that's the recommended diet for someone who is just finishing up breast cancer treatment, believe it or not, it's a plant-based diet. So soy is one super cancer food that you can use. You also have kale. Kale, sweet potatoes, squash is another one. And it says that um, to increase the consumption, <laughs> hi, so kale, kale is another one, sweet potatoes and squash. Um, I really don't like squash, but I do love sweet potatoes. Kale I'm not really um, fond of, but anything green, um, broccoli is good, um, avocados is another good food. Um, so it says in 2009, a study was published and it talked about prevention, increased consumption of kale, sweet potatoes, and squash. So it says the report findings that women live healthier by eating these particular foods. So your food selection is very important. They also mentioned um, salmon, um, fatty acids. We eat a lot of fat that has nothing to do with our health. So we have to make sure that the fat that we, the fats that we are consuming are going to be beneficial for our health. So I'm not going to stall you guys any longer because I have another phenomenal woman here today as part of our Phenomenal Women series. And what she's going to do is she's going to set the record straight by recommending nutritional information for women who are dealing with the aftermath of cancer. We know that cancer treatment can wreak havoc on the body and it leaves behind residue. And so today we're gonna to find out nutritional weapons that we can use to stop the enemy in its tracks. So I have a graduate of Gramlin State University. She earned her bachelor's degree in chemistry and biology with a minor in computer science. She recently received her PhD in nutrition from the University of Illinois. Welcome to Warriors Talk, the phenomenal 
Dr. Sparkle Springfield. Yay! <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for oh, having goodness. me. You just have the biggest smile on your face. Is that me? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So I just graduated on May 4th. Congratulations. So it's still like when someone says, Dr. Sparkle Springfield, it's just like, ah. Oh, wow. That's me. That's <laughs> you. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys can see, but her eyelashes, her eyelids are sparkling right now. <laughs> So right. that name is fit. So I, I saw your graduation picture and you know you had the one leg kicked up and I'm like, oh, she yeah. looks happy. I was really so, excited. Six years in the making. Wow. So ten years from Grambling. So wow. Making it last been a while. Oh wow. I am honored that you have just taken time out of your schedule to come in and to share this life saving information with listeners. Um, okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And I heard some of your introduction. Um, I thought you were reading some findings from a study. Yes. Right, so it's always good to just stay informed. There's so much um, nutrition information out there, right? It's just everywhere. It's great literature, like magazines and newspapers. Yes. Of course, every journal, scientific articles. And then there's people's personal experience. All of it is, all of it, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes in the academia people say oh it's not published in the academic right. journal then they, should, uh, they try and discount that and maybe say well we need to see it in the science literature first but um, I can say you know especially nutrition in science is always evolving so you will, you'll hear something you know like oh eat this and then maybe two mm -hmm. years later you hear don't eat this yes. eat that so I never want to discount people's personal experiences but today I will tell you what we have found in the literature so far um, but that doesn't mean you know it's like oh I ate this and it didn't make me feel good that's okay that's your personal experience but what I'm going to do today is just inform you of the uh, dietary guidelines uh, the cancer prevention guidelines right so that's what uh, I did my dissertation work on just looked at um, a small sample really one of the one of the biggest studies um, in breast cancer survivors so far as far as lifestyle interventions uh, to date it's one of the biggest studies but still in the large realm uh, it was about 210 women I'll tell you a little bit about wow. what I saw in their dietary habits and then how that uh, related to dietary guidelines and then also anecdotal stuff things I heard things that I heard while experiencing uh, uh, the study with the women. So it was like a lifestyle intervention for African American breast cancer survivors specifically. So I learned about, about that sample and then I compared it to what we see uh, in the literature. Now what made you, okay your dissertation was the topic okay. of the show which is diet quality in African American breast cancer survivors. So right, that's yeah. our topic. Yeah. So how did you come up with that topic? Like what drawed you to that? Was it breast cancer in your family? Or I mean, so a friend or a family, what made you select that topic for your dissertation? So first, um, yes, just to be brief, right to the point, I, I do have breast cancer survivors uh, in my family. But before then, just health disparities, you know, just certain groups, uh, unfortunately, most of the time, uh, people of color um, or communities that are suffering from diseases more from other groups are experiencing chronic disease usually more than, or any disease more than another group. So um, when I uh, came to Grambling, first of all, let me and say a little bit about myself. Go so so mm -hmm. my name is Sparkle Springfield. I'm originally uh, from the Bay Area of California. Oh, wow. And like I said, I went did undergrad in Grambling, Louisiana, right? And then I've been uh, at, in Chicago. Um, a recent graduate of the University of Illinois at Chicago uh, for the last six years. And even though I went to a HBCU, I knew very little about health disparities. You know, I knew um, maybe uh, about some other social determinants of health, you know, some things, a little bit about racism, a little bit about mass incarceration, but not a lot about health disparities, right? Mm -hmm. So coming from uh, like I said, the Bay Area of California, uh, I thought I was pretty healthy, 
in, in my household, we grew up using a lot of Mrs. Dash. I lost a lot of ground turkey, a lot of whole uh, grain bread, brown rice. So I thought that I was doing, you know, pretty good. I was like, okay, my family's we're pretty healthy. We just get 99% uh, fat-free turkey or whatever. But then uh, I, I went to the South, and um, I originally I didn't eat red meat. You know, that was, that's who we always eat chicken, turkey, fish, but not red meat. And I saw a lot of red meat. Mm, yes. <laughs> you know, I couldn't hardly <laughs> eat in the, in the school cafeteria. I was like, oh, it's a lot. And I still didn't know much about health disparities. I did notice on average that uh, people were a little larger because mm -hmm. I'm about 10, 12. So in California, you know, it was always like, oh, sparkles, you know, you're very thick. We, you know, you better watch. You know, those type of comments. When I got to the wow. South, it was like, small. You need to yes. eat. I was like, this is different. <laughs> you know, this wow. is different. So um, with, with that context, then when I came to Chicago, I took my first public health class, and the professor kind of ran off. You know, uh, if you're African American or black, you're more likely to die from diabetes, heart disease, mm -hmm. stroke, cancer. It just... The list just kept going on and on, and I was just feeling like I was sinking in my chair. So I was like, this is devastating. And I looked around at my classmates, and nobody was flinching. Nobody was moving. And I was like, does everybody know this? Wow. That people of color, blacks in particular, we did a lot of black-white comparisons. And this health disparities across all racial ethnicities and blacks from different places. But in that particular class, we did a lot of black-white, black-white American uh, comparisons on life expectancy. And this was around the time, too, when they were comparing the life of a black male in Chicago mm -hmm. to like third world countries and the war in Iraq as far as death rates and things. And we're still hearing that now. But I didn't hear a lot about heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. And I was like, oh, people are just, people are dying yes. all the time from diet-related mm -hmm. diseases. So I became very passionate as a nutrition major about health disparities and the role that diet can play in prevention. But not just prevention, you know, once you have a diagnosis, how can you continue to survive, you know, uh, by having a healthy diet? How can that help you thrive? So I got really interested in that, and I, I worked on prostate cancer. Oh. I got into cancer because I found, um, I found nutrition research at some times a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, oh, yes. you see, eggs are good, eggs are bad. Coffee's good, coffee's bad. And I couldn't, um, I would want all the time because I had that mindset of health disparities. I would always want to know well, what is it for black people? Because there are some, there are, uh, some racial differences uh, in dietary guidelines, like salt is a popular mm -hmm. one. I think the, the guideline for the general population is like 23 to 2400 milligrams a day. But for African Americans and for people, uh, 51 and older, you should only have 1,500 milligrams of salt in a day. So there are some mm -hmm. racial differences in dietary recommendations. And so I would always want to know when we were learning something, what about for blacks, what about for blacks? Uh, and sometimes it's like, well, now, Sparkle, we're talking about the general mm -hmm. population right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, well, so um, with learning so much about the, the nutrition, but still kind of, when my family was asking me, should I eat this or eat that? Oh, let me go to the literature where this study said this. The study says that, you know, uh, wasn't able to give, in becoming a budding scientist, wasn't able to give straight answers. But when I started with cancer research, I found it much more clear, right? Mm -hmm. A causes B. This is where, like, uh, the first thing I ran into was with red meat, mm -hmm. processed meat, yes. which now recently, the, um, there has been some policy to say, that process me causes cancer. You can say that. You can that say is, that. That is research yes. based. That is evidence based. Mm -hmm. You can say that. But uh, when I started the PhD program, you couldn't say that, right? But I'm looking. I'm in a genetics lab. Shout out to uh, Dr. Rick Kittle. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a genetics lab and I was learning. I was on a project for prostate cancer, environmental modifiers of prostate cancer, and uh, vitamin D was a hot topic at the time. I was on study for that. And um, I'm looking at this literature on red meat, processed meat, and I'm like, it's just saying, increases your risk, increases mm -hmm. your risk. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they don't tell me that in nutrition. He said, have a little bit in moderation. In moderation. They didn't say 
process me call again right. so people should know that i was like I, so that is really i think why i geared to, i leaned toward the cancer mm -hmm. research because it was just more easier to understand you know it was just like this causes your increases your risk of cancer i was like boom and then it allowed me to uh, communicate with my family at a coffee kind of dinner table conversation and i can say grandma i learned this and i say oh i learned this Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes this, because then you know your family doesn't have patience with you. Like, right. girl is a good man. <laughs> I, I, I can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> now, my thing is, is just going through um, researching what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. Yeah. And at some point, you know what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat, but your money is telling you something totally different. Right. So a lot of people don't make healthy choices because they don't have the money to do so. So then they tend to just get what their money can afford, which is normally the processed food. Um, it's normally the processed food. Okay, they want you to speak a little loud, Sparkle, so can you? Oh, no. Just make, yeah, okay. just make sure you're right in the mic. So. Can you hear me now? They can. Okay, thank you. So with the processed food, um, like the hot dogs, the processed meat, it's so much easier when you're out and you're just grabbing it. And like you said, everything in moderation, it shouldn't be a part of your everyday diet. I would say that, um, but what do those people do that don't have the money necessarily to eat healthy? How can they select healthier choices on a budget? Right. So it's complicated. <laughs> I mean, that's a it's a compli constant it is. complication. Not just it's like the the topic of food availability and food access. Right. Is the things that I'm looking for to follow whatever type of diet, do I have them available in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. in my community? And then two, are they accessible? Because we know that availability and access are two different things, right? Mm -hmm. It might be there, but if, as you said, if I can't afford it, or uh, if I can't um, get to the store, if I don't have time, you know, if it's perishable, I only have time to grocery shop, you know, once a month, and you want me to follow up, uh, a vegan diet right. or I need to grocery shop three, four times a week. It's just like, is it uh, available and is it accessible? Does it fit with my life, right? So uh, as far as personal tips, I noticed, and I'm gonna be anecdotal for a minute and that's okay, mm -hmm. uh, just in my own diet, definitely since I, I'm vegetarian mm -hmm. and I'm pressing that, anybody just telling y'all my personal things uh, I definitely spend less money Wow I definitely spend less money and that but that here's the caveats right mm -hmm. I shop three to four times a week okay because everything has to be fresh and yeah I get things fresh I when it's fresh and it's in season mm -hmm. it's definitely cheaper than uh, sometimes than frozen okay and then uh, you know, things that are not in season also. So I think right now, I'm just a, with a little ad lib and I'm sure like strawberries are in season. Mm -hmm. I saw them just recently for 99 cents in a carton. Oh wow. <laughs> Seemed to grab some of those, but the issue I think is if you can't get to the store, cause they're, they're 99 cents, okay, they're 99 cents a carton, but they go bad in two days. Two days, three days, okay. they start rotting. So if you don't eat them right away, or you know you have to prepare them or anything you don't get to them or you can't go back to the store in two days to get something else you know then that that becomes a hard decision is it better than just to get a, a large bag of chips you know for two or three dollars and that's gonna last that's gonna last the week or mm -hmm. you know snacks for kids lunch all week mm -hmm. you know so um, like you see it becomes complicated in many factors so my suggestions, how do you do it? Buy in season when you can. Um, know, know the, scout and assess the resources in your neighborhood, right? Do you have, how, and maybe, how does the produce look in your neighborhood? You know, I've been to grocery stores and I'm like, I wouldn't have that <laughs> produce. It doesn't look, right. it doesn't look good. I don't want to get in trouble shotting out any particular stores, but some right. stores I've been in. <laughs> right. So um, 
Yeah, I guess you have to think about uh, think about everything. And also shopping frozen, shopping frozen. Uh, just if you want to incorporate more fruits and vegetables, um, but maybe you don't have them or that they're of low quality, shopping frozen. And what else? We're thinking about tips on how to save money right. instead of a uh, process. Also, I mean, it's not easy. It's not. It's dip. It's very difficult and complicated. But um, also, just making it. You have to just make the effort. You have to make. You have to go the extra mile and prioritize food. We do it for everything else. We'll drive. Um, we'll drive a couple of hundred miles to get our hair braided or get it weaved down our back, and get our face made up. You know, get these wheels for our car. So, you know, get these red bottom shoes. We do a lot of things. Right now, what we're going to do is, <laughs> if you're just tuning in, we're talking about diet quality in the African-American breast cancer survivors. And we're talking we're with Dr. Sparkle. And we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to listen to Praise You in the Storm by Casting Crowns. Oh, no. I've never done this before. Am I messing the whole thing up? Oh, no. <laughs> great. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm doing Facebook Live right now. Oh, okay. So I didn't know if you wanted to do Facebook Live on your yeah. phone. You do. You could do it on your phone. Go ahead. I've and set never it up done that while we on break. Either. Oh wow. I know. I've been you under a rock. Oh my. I'm just yeah, because like, you've been welcome busy. Welcome to the world again. Yeah. yeah. Because you've been busy. Okay. Uh, shoot. I can name a few shorts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Especially 75th and Stone Avenue. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know the rules. Ron Kelly, what besides but fresh fruits and vegetables, tips on mm -hmm. other items that are good for. Okay, I'll ask her that. Okay. I'll ask her that. Um, blueberries are good. They are. Yes, blueberries are. I got, I'll ask her about dairy. I'm not sure about dairy. I'll ask her. Michael's have good. Okay. My caller is on there. She's on there already? She'll be on. Okay. How do I do Facebook? Are you on your page? I, um, I might not be. Oh. Okay, so this little thing right here, uh -huh. it says live. Okay. You just press it, and then it's gonna go right there, and it's gonna say go live. So. You are live, and then you can invite people. Invite your friends to come in, and they'll get a, a message to say, hey, she is live right now. Let me see what she's talking about. can invite them all at one time? You could just click. No, you just got to go click, click, click. Oh, God. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. We're talking with Dr. Sparkle Springfield. She has her Ph.D. in nutrition, and we're talking about the diet quality in African-American breast cancer survivors. And I know we have some survivors on the line right now who wants to get the information so they can incorporate it into their... I don't want to say diet, but your everyday living, it should become a lifestyle. Once you're, you're doing this every single day, it becomes a lifestyle. But you need to know what to select and how to select it. So that's what we're doing today. So thank you for tuning in. If you have not already shared the video, share the video. And if you have not already invited anybody in, please do that at this time so that they can get this important information. And those of you who have made comments, I will be reading your comments on air. Just give me a moment. We're on break right now, so we should be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. But, yeah, you can go ahead and invite the people in. Um, if you want to put a title on there, you can put your title. Say, hey, join me. I'm online right now. So, um, you can try to... Can I show the radio? Mm-hmm. Can they hear me talking? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> I've never been on Facebook Live before. Wow, I'm so shocked. Are you serious? Lady Rochelle. Yes. Lady Rochelle, mm -hmm. my friend here, right? Wow. She encouraged me to go on Facebook Live because we're doing a radio segment on urban uh, broadcast media on diet quality and uh, African American breast cancer survivors. So, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Hey! 
Auntie is in is from it California. Carlana? Auntie, it's my Chucky first Burrell. radio thing. Thank you for tuning in again. I appreciate that. Do you see it? Hello, Nicola. I'm hey, an Dennis. expert, yes. <laughs> hey, Angela. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Janice, how do you become a sponsor? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm excited. I'm if you want to become good. a sponsor, the only thing you have to do is... Diet um, and all that good stuff. I got my glitter you can on. You guys go to my that. website and you can... It's um, www.warriorstalk.org. <laughs> and it tells you... It's a button there to say how to be a sponsor. If you want to be a one-time sponsor and you just want to donate to the broadcast, you can do that as well by going to PayPal. Okay, so I'm going to just send the slash Warriors Talk One. PayPal.me slash Warriors Talk One, and you can make a one-time donation, and it helps me with the broadcast. I'm the question from Also, I use my donations for my Warrior and Battle Fund, where I make these, I call them Battle Buddy Sacks. And the battle buddy sacks are for the um, people who are doing chemo, and it has um, it has slippers, a blanket, a pillow. It has puzzles. Um, it has inspirational stuff. It has um, a snack with water, like healthy stuff. And so it's their um, I call it a battle buddy sack for people who are in chemo, and we go from different um, um, cancer locations, and we drop off the battle buddy sacks to the different people who are starting off chemo and so that's where the money goes all 100 percent of the money goes either to the broadcast or it goes to um help fund the warriors in battle fund so with paypal paypal.me slash warriors talk you can donate to them hello elena <laughs> i'm so excited do i keep it going yes did you invite somebody in uh, yeah i you invited did. lots of people yes. Look at my she's like, but she's on there with you like like, I, I don't even think I have that privilege yet, yeah, but you do. All of yours are like that. You can invite all... Really? Uh, girl. You can invite all of your people in. Whenever you see the little camera, anybody that you want to invite in and, and help you with the conversation or talk, that little camera is going to show up next to their name, and you can invite... You have an app on as well. Oh, they can talk to you? They can... Yeah, she can talk on the video while you're on the video talking. <laughs> Whenever you see that little camera, that means you can invite somebody in. Okay, I just want you guys to know that what you can do, it's a little thing in the corner of your video that you can click on so that you can continue to browse on Facebook and you can still hear the show. How so did you get? If you yeah. want to support, I see your you can face support, but you can still browse. Yes. In the left hand corner, you can hit that little white button. Yes. It's a little white square. It'll shorten, it'll make the video small, and then go in the corner. You can still hear, you can still you, see, but you can continue to browse on Facebook. Phone. So, if you want to do that and you want to continue browsing and you just want to support, because you know I need my numbers. You got to so, show me how, what I'm doing. That here. song. Oh. Are you serious? I hope I don't get in Facebook jail. I can't afford to be in Facebook jail anymore. I cannot. I'm tired of being in Facebook jail. Okay, we're getting ready to come back, you guys. We're getting ready to come back. Hey, Elena. It's until hey, oh, Angela. just till eight. But I think I can take it all. Okay, we coming yeah. back. Yeah, I think I should. We're coming um, back. Uh huh. What is it? Yeah, Chicago. Oh, okay. We're coming back, you guys. Okay. Are we coming back? Mm -hmm. Should I keep this live? Leave it live. Okay. So they can hear you. My dogs are barking. Mm -hmm. We ready? It's okay. And we are back. This is Lady Rochelle with Warriors Talk here on UBM Radio, your station for faith, talk, and music. And I am sitting here talking to the Dr. Sparkle Springfield, and we are talking about diet quality in African American breast cancer survivors. Before we continue the conversation, we're going to go over to our motivational moment with um, Mylia Simone Matheny. Hello, my Leah. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing good. So this is our motivational moment, and I'm just wondering if they be able to hear you. Not sure. Hold on. Give me a second, so they can hear it too. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, great motivational moment. It's related to the the previous motivational moment I did last week. And tonight, I want to share with you guys a verse, well, two verses, actually, from 1 Timothy 2, and we're going to do 9 and 10. Okay. And it's in the New Living Translation version. 
And I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. For women who claim to be God to make themselves attractive by the good things they do. So basically, this is a reminder for all of us not to be concerned with making the, uh, the outer appearance beautiful. And for us, basically, this verse is reminding us not to be striving for the meaningless things that the world may see as attractive and fancy. Because God is more concerned with us preparing ourselves as examples and inspiration for the next generation. So as I close out tonight's motivational moment, I want to share with you all, and for all of my phenomenal women out there, I dedicate this quote to you. This is a quote by a phenomenal woman in her own right. She's a writer, a teacher, and so much more. Her name is Elisa Pulliam. God desires to transform us into the women we long to become for the sake of the next generation. Isn't that all the motivation we need for embracing real life change? Yes, I love that. that was awesome. Thank you very much. And I Thank know, you, Lady Michelle. You're welcome. Tell them how to get a hold of you, how to follow you. Yes, you all can keep up with my devotions and encouragement. You can look me up on Facebook, Devotional by Me. My leader is Simone Dini. Um, my name is pretty long, but yes, Devotional by My leader is Simone Dini. You can also look for my blog. It's Impact MSM at it's Impact MSM dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mylia, for that motivational moment. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to hop over to your news snapshot. And this was reported on May 10th. Um, some of you may know him, Damon John, who is an investor on Shark Tank. He was fighting thyroid cancer. And he talked about him getting an extensive physical that showed that he had thyroid cancer. It was stage two. He had the thyroid removed, and he said he didn't miss a beat. And so he just wanted to make sure that he let lets everybody know how important it is to go in and get your physicals and make sure that you're on top of the milestone screenings that we're supposed to be getting every single year. He said his motivation was his, um, his three daughters, and he stressed the importance of staying on top of your health. He said success is being able to get up every single day and be happy. So that was Damon John. He is one of the investors on Shark Tank. And that was your health news Snapchat. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to get back to our topic, which is diet quality in African-American breast cancer survivors. And again, we're talking to Dr. Sparkle, and she was just talking about having access and availability to quality foods. And so let me go to these questions because I have, we had a couple of questions really quick. Um, other than veggies and fresh fruit. She said, can you give some tips? Rhonda Kelly wants to know, can you give some tips on other foods that's good for us? Oh, absolutely. So you want to engage in a plant-based diet. That's me. It's different <laughs> from being a, a vegan, right? Yes. Okay, because some people may not know that that's totally different. Yes, a, a plant-based diet, a plant-based lifestyle is just eating the foods that uh, are plant-based, right? So and in addition, uh, Rhonda to fruits and vegetables. That's also whole grains, legumes and pulses, so all of your beans, and um, I would say uh, nuts. You know, I say legumes, pulses, nuts, uh, lean meats, high quality fats. You know, and your olive oil over your um, mm. other things that you can have, margarine. So, you know, plant-based fats, coconut oil, palm oils have become very popular uh, versus uh, animal fats. Now, the transition from how you're eating now, mm -hmm. trying to go to a plant-based diet, what is the impact on your body? Like, do you feel an impact right away? Or does the process, is it a slow process to where you feel maybe you have more energy because now you're eating healthy? You know, teach his own. Based things, you know, that uh, high diet quality is associated with many health benefits. 
uh, outcomes, and not just uh, large ones. I know uh, today we were talking about cancer, maybe cancer survivorship, other chronic diseases, but also those secondary health outcomes like sleep quality, mm -hmm. you know, quality of life. Yeah, <laughs> those yes. type of things mm -hmm. are also very uh, highly related to uh, a, a high diet quality. Um, so you asked when? Okay, so. Um, when we study lifestyle interventions, like we're gonna study a diet intervention, we usually have people on the intervention. If it's a diet intervention, we want them to follow a certain dietary pattern for at least six months. Okay. Right, so if I was gonna do a study and see how people felt at baseline, at beginning, then I gave them an intervention, and then I was looking at some outcome, let's say I was looking at heart health, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna ask these people to do a fasting blood draw so I can look at their blood, lipids, you know, do a lipid panel, their cholesterol, triglycerides, whatever. So what does that I do would, when you're looking at those numbers? What is that telling you? Oh, that's an uh, indicator of heart health. Okay. Because on your heart health, um, also other things, but heart health is a big one, right, mm -hmm. for an example. So I would put them on the intervention for at least six months. That's what we try to, that's a standard okay. research for uh, six months. But, um, you know, you talk to people and they'll say, I started eating better two days ago and I feel good. <laughs> I woke up feeling better so uh, you know I think it's to each his own when you will start feeling the benefits and also I, I think it's because people have different things going on mm -hmm. you know like like I said I changed my diet um, I like to think I eat good follow mm -hmm. the guidelines mm -hmm. um, and you know my family or different people might look at me and say Oh, yeah, you vegetarian, you don't look vegetarian. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> people make it you know, however they think that you should look. Or, right. But um, just to be personal, you know, I had very, very bad menstrual cramps. Very bad. Mm -hmm. Since I changed my diet, then they're much better. You know, you know? So you just because somebody, you never know yes. the benefits that somebody is getting from a healthy diet. You know, so you... Um, you can't look at them and say, oh, you know, this or that might be going on. No telling what someone is going through. Mm -hmm. A diet, changing your diet will make you feel better from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So if you don't lose weight right away, if that's what you're trying to accomplish. I ask people that, they still sparkle, I've, I've, I've changed my diet, I've been eating this and not that, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'm not losing any weight. And I say, well, how are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. Are you well? Oh, I'm sleeping through the night. Oh, you know, I was tossing and turning before, but you know, um, just different things. You know, uh, energy. You know, you like to say energy. Right. Mood. You know, yeah. are you snap? Are you quick to snap? Or were you snapping <laughs> on people before? Are you just in general happier? You know, there are tons of, of benefits, and and only you or you would know. It's kind of individualized when they kick in, but an overall general, if you are consistent with something for six months, you should see the change. And consistency is key. We know sometimes we can get derailed off of our course, but consistency is key. And last week when we were talking to um, Dr. Sam, she mentioned what you just said about how you, the foods that you eat um, help regulate your menstrual cycle and the cramping. So that, we learned oh, that really? last week. Yes, we Great. did. So we know we're on the right track. So mm. we just had another Dr. Cosign on that, you guys. So that that's important. Um, my thing is I've been teeter-totting on this plant-based diet. I'm not really a meat eater anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but my thing is, um, is this going to be expensive for me? And is mm -hmm. my system going to be shocked? Because, mm -hmm. you know, my, my, my thing is sweets. Yeah. I, it's, I love sweets. Mm -hmm. But um, I know you can substitute sweets. Somebody mentioned berries. Mm -hmm. Yes, berries is a good cancer agent, um, anti-fighting agent that you can use. Um, any type of berries. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that also can be a sugar for you too because it's mm -hmm. a natural sugar. Mm -hmm. But again, everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. I want to compare. So there is, even, there is quality, right? Mm -hmm. So the, even though it is car carbohydrates and different things, I, I definitely wouldn't compare a store-bought sweet with like a berry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like There's a sugar. Like sugar. Mm -hmm. um, no, because <laughs> you know there's this big thing about sugar. Everybody says sugar causes cancer. Sugar, right, so right. break that down. Explain that because people think 
eating sugar itself is going to cause you cancer. Girl, you got cancer because you ate too much sugar, or you got diabetes because you, you just eat too much sugar. Okay, so <laughs> the sugar and the cancer thing, you know, I get that I get that a lot. People say mm -hmm. to me, you know, because you know that sugar uh, feeds the, yes. the cancer kids. Feeds it up, yes. Okay, uh, remember I said we're going <laughs> to talk about these evidence-based things. There's, that's still under, you know, investigation. People are studying sugar and cancer, right? At the at the basic level, glucose, right, sugar, it feeds every cell. Mm. It feeds your brain. It feeds, you know, tons of, it feeds your organs, period. Glucose for energy, it has tons of uh, functions. It helps you to keep your blood sugar in balance. You know, your body stores glucose and releases it. That's just a biological function, yes. But that doesn't mean that sugar is strictly feeding the, the cancer cells. You know, uh, I think what people are missing is, because um, like I said, it's complicated, right? There is a strong link between higher insulin levels mm -hmm. and cancer cells. So cancer cells does have insulin receptors. So insulin uh, is used to break down the sugar in your bloodstream, right? So, and this brings me back to our store-bought sweets and mm -hmm. our berry. Okay. Sometimes when you eat something, processed food, refined sugar, it'll spike your mm. blood sugar level. Okay. Right? Oh. It spikes your blood sugar. So what do you need? You need insulin to come, bring it down. Right? Right. And if you have higher levels of insulin, that has been uh, linked to an increased cancer. Wow. Now, was it the sugar or was it just that you were out of balance, right? You had blood sugar spikes. Right, that cause you to have an increased level of insulin. So we know that processed foods and refined sugars will spike your blood sugar, unlike um, like fruits and things. Because mm -hmm. apple or something may have it may have uh, sugar in it, but it will also have fiber. Okay. And that's when you get in the conversation of whole foods. Yes. Right. Whole foods will have whole paycheck. Uh, well. Right. Whole. <laughs> <laughs> but just the whole foods, like an apple, yes. a banana, a berry. Right. It'll have several things. So it's like blackberries. Mm -hmm. Blackberries have a, 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 a significant amount of fiber. And they say fiber is one of the things that you should incorporate in your diet if you're trying to live healthy, especially after cancer. For several things. Mm -hmm. For, for um, weight management. Oh, for wow. heart health, okay. that's that's a lot of the marketing technique you'll see uh, on cereal boxes. You know, it has mm -hmm. fiber, it has yes. fiber. Heart health got hearts on mm -hmm. it because of the, of the fiber claim. You know, that I mean, that's why they're able to claim heart health on these cereal boxes is because it has fiber. But you don't need some of these box cereals for fiber. Like I just told you, <laughs> you could get it from blackberries. So yeah. when in, and when in doubt, get it from the natural source instead of trying to, like some people get um, the pills or they take powder supplements to try to um, get what they need versus eating healthy. The whole food. The whole, the whole food. food. Yeah, yeah, eat the, that, and I know that has a, like you said, whole paycheck. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the, uh, the store, you know, the huge empire store, which is a, a whole other conversation. I know this is where we're going, but when I say whole foods, I just mean the actual, uh, food. the actual food, and not. I'm not telling you to go to Whole Foods, the market, mm -hmm. the, the the empire. <laughs> but you know, that's where I went when um when I when I said, okay, I'm going to eat healthy. That's the place where I went. It's mm -hmm. it is expensive. It's expensive to eat healthy, but then again, this is stuff that you're putting in your body. Right. And you should care about the stuff that you're putting in your body. And so if you're putting in the right nutrients in your body, and this is what, when I was going through chemo, um, they sent me to see a nutritionist. And so she was like, um, I'm like, well, can you give me some supplements or something that I can take? She was like, no. She just broke down, this is what you need to be eating. And if you're eating all of these things, you don't need to take any supplements to make up or you're gonna get it from what you're eating. And I think a lot of people miss that, that they can get what they need from the right foods, the whole foods that they're mm -hmm. eating, and you don't need to add anything to it if you're eating the right stuff, putting the right stuff in your engine. Right, so, um, and I'm gonna go take it back to the guidelines. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so for the cancer uh, prevention guidelines, mm -hmm. for as far as research, I think it's out on supplements that you don't okay. recommend 
uh, supplementing. Now, if I think if you are out there taking a supplement, you know, um, I'm not trying to raise your anxiety or anything. Like, oh no, <laughs> you know it's fine. Especially, you know, when you talk about cancer survivorship, mm -hmm. um, and you look. I don't know if you guys have seen Lady Rochelle. She's just gorgeous. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't know. You can never tell how old black people are. But like, uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, um, when you talk about survivorship, it's usually an older population, and um, in women in particular, okay. you know, uh, doctors, physicians will recommend a vitamin D or a calcium supplement. So uh, if you are on a supplement, you know, especially doctor recommended. You know, okay, I'm not trying to uh, deter you from that, but just as far as wandering in the whole in the in the uh, health store mm -hmm. and just reading all oh, this benefit and that benefit and taking all of these things, yeah, it's a, I would agree, I, and this is based on the guidelines, not Sparkle's opinion, mm -hmm. um, to just try and uh, eat the, the highest quality diet you can, and if you do. You won't, you won't uh, need those things. What supplements uh, I find are helpful for is when you are deficient. Okay. Right? When you're, when you're deficient in something, um, then you want to maybe, and I mean, just with all the fortification, it's very, it's seldom that people actually are deficient in uh, certain minerals, um, certain things. But vitamin D, vitamin D, especially in the African American community, um, it's common that people mm -hmm. are deficient. And so um, if you're deficient in something, then it would make sense to have a supplement. And even then, like for vitamin D, I, rec I recommend people have cod liver oil. Mm -hmm. uh, I, oh, I know, it's gross. You can get the lemon flavor. <laughs> uh, but also to be aware of um, the difference between uh, fat based uh, minerals and vitamins and then also water-based because mm -hmm. your water your water-based vitamins they need to be replaced all the time and they get vitamin a vitamin c you know they wow. need to be, and you only get as much as uh your cells can absorb right so even if you take mm -hmm. 2,000 milligrams you know you, you probably won't absorb that much and then after you go to the bathroom or whatever excrete it you, it needs to be replaced so if you wow. just eat healthy foods all day, you're fine. But other things, like I said, vitamin D, which is fat-based, you can make, you can what they call mega dose, have a lot at one time, and your body will store it in its fat. Oh wow! Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Like when, with un, under a minute, give us oh. some words of wisdom before we close. Oh, out. we're closing. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do a part this two. This was with her. so fun. We're gonna uh, do a part two. So I want to say. Um, Eat the best diet you can. Eat vegetables. I cannot, um, I cannot stress this enough. I'm gonna say uh, five is a minimum. It is not uh, the the maximum, but it's a minimum you should have. At least five servings of vegetables a day. But really, that's uh, for children. You should have five servings, or women should have seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and men should aim for nine. Um, more vegetables than fruit. I find um, if people do that, a lot of things take care of itself, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, right now the average American eats about one vegetable a day, wow. one fruit, one vegetable a day. So if you're supposed to, imagine if you're supposed to have anywhere between five to seven, I mean five to nine or more, you know, if you just eat those, those fruits and vegetables, because all of the good stuff, we talk about whole foods, that you need are there. So if you get that, then a lot of other things you just won't have. You prioritize that, you know? So I think that's the most important thing, drink water. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much for that. That was Dr. Sparkle, and we were talking about diet quality in African-American breast cancer survivors. Warriors, remember to keep thriving while surviving. You can keep talking. I know he's going crazy over there because we. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I just um, got all oh, time. No, that's okay. Let me see because people were um, commenting. Um, I'm sure they have Gibson Williams said, "Yes, I have to do." I'm sorry, vitamin C because she's vitamin C deficient. Okay. Okay. What? Oh, vitamin D. Vitamin yeah, D. that's common. What food should you eat for bad menstrual cramps? Is it healthy? What? To have that heavy bleeding every month? Mm. We're gonna do a part two. She may have um, 
fibroids or, or endometriosis. That, okay, or so you should mention that last week too. Yeah. Okay. It's a wonderful show. We do need a part two. I'm gonna get her to come back. Hey, you guys. We Apparently, oh, I did okay. Dairy. Somebody asked about dairy and breast cancer. Yeah. So it's a thing. So dairy, y'all gonna get me in trouble. Somebody asked about dairy and breast cancer. You know, it's there is. It's really political on dairy. You know, because uh, kind of the FDA and you know the USDA have some political ties. They're kind of in bed together. So. Mm -hmm. Some people, actually in the nutrition camp, so like the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, which are created by the USDA, which are supposed to be evidence-based, recommends that you have low-fat dairy, and dairy is okay. Now, Harvard and the nutrition experts at Harvard, they created their own dietary guidelines, and these are uh, the alternative uh, healthy eating index is the pattern, but Harvard has dietary guidelines and they said there's no literature that we need to eat dairy low-fat dairy mm. and it's like it's not evidence-based so that's at the top that's the people who make the guidelines are disagreeing so you just ask me just a budding graduate I'm gonna say you know I tell you what I don't eat it <laughs> but I'm not saying you can't have, I'm not saying you can't have it but uh, uh, the thing about fibroids and other uh, hormones is just bottom line, there is evidence to suggest that dairy has hormones in it. Mm. And as you know, some of us, this is about breast cancer, mm -hmm. some people have po uh, tumors that are hormone positive. Yes. yes. Yep. You know, so you eating extra hormones, it cannot be good, you know, and then, then that goes for... Uh, cancerous tumors as well as non-cancerous like fibroids. Mm -hmm. You know, so my my life is out. My phone is dead. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'm not gonna say. Oh, she said you did a fantastic oh, job. Oh, thank you. Guys. We need a part two. We do. So she heard y'all saying we need a part two, so I'm gonna get her to agree. To yeah, place. I'm definitely here. I'm here for it. This was yeah. so much fun. I know we didn't get to a lot of stuff, but. I'm really excited about this, and I know uh, nutrition can be complicated and therefore frustrating because a lot of the answers is like, well, it depends, but I promise to tell you everything I know, and whatever I don't know, I will look up because this is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so if you guys have questions for her, so the next time she comes on, we can have those questions ready for her um, so we'll know exactly what we can talk about so we won't be off topic. So y'all need to let her know. Give, give us some suggestions. She's right here so we can get her in. So you can get this important information. It's life-saving. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Lady uh, Rachel. You're welcome. Thank you guys for tuning. <laughs> I'm so excited yeah. for her. She's just like an idol. She's just got her PhD, you yeah, know. Like I was in school for my PhD, but when I got when I got cancer, I had to I had to leave it alone. It's too much. Yeah. But when I, so when I see it. yes, when I see yeah. someone who goes through the program, this is a young chick. She's a young chick. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm I'm really I'm just I'm overjoyed when I see African American women who are out there doing their thing and she's doing something that's gonna benefit the community. This is benefiting the community. This information right here is gonna help people like me, breast cancer survivors, like Rhonda Kelly, like Angela, help us live longer. We need this. We need people that look like us that's out there doing stuff for us. So I appreciate you. Absolutely. Dr. This was Sparkle. Great. Ah, I'm excited. <laughs> Otherwise, no. When I was in school, they told me I couldn't wear this glitter eyeshadow that I like. So now I'm graduated, and I'm like, boom, I got it on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, oh Mr. Crabs in the... Uh, we, we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. So I would say... The dairy, any uh, processed food, fast foods, high salt, high salt, high sugar, high fat foods, right? I find when it comes around that I have uh, worse if I've been like, you know, eating things that are questionable <laughs> and not exercising. Mm. Exercise. I also have to really, you know, I, my uh, 
expertise is in nutrition, but uh, I do a, a little bit about exercise because you know a lot of the literature will combine it, mm -hmm. like a diet and physical activity. I cannot uh, leave that out. I would be remiss to leave out physical activity and menstrual strength cramps. Wow. As far as helping. Yay! <laughs> Janice is going all in. I'm excited for Rhonda. She just not too long ago finished her um, her treatment, so she's a survivor right now. So she's looking for oh, ways wonderful. that she can stay healthy as well. And so I'm excited. Virgie is another survivor. We got all our survivors on here. Yes. Hey, girl. Hey. Yes. Kina. Hey, Kina. That's my cousin. She's not a uh, breast cancer survivor, but she she supports us. Stay strong. Thank you. Oh wow. Hey, Diane. You guys do me a favor. Nicola is another survivor. Yes. Hey. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, hey Janet, share the video, share the video, share the video so somebody can get this life-saving information. It's very impactful to your overall health. We're not just about dieting, but we're about a quality lifestyle for the long term. So thank Dr. Sparkle for coming in. We will do a part thank two. Thank you so much. We will do I'm a part sorry, two. sorry, Janice. My uncle too. Oh, That's she did. Very yeah. Interesting. yeah, my uncle too. Just last month. Wow. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the research on prostate cancer, they talk about um, the processed meat, the red meat, the char, they call mm -hmm. it the heterocyclic mm -hmm. amines, mm -hmm. and how you prepare the food. Um, I'm thinking also for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer and breast cancer have a lot of similarities as far as wow. recommendations. Okay. Know, as far as recommendations for prevention. So, is there a way I can get them information? Yes, um, what I'm going to do is, um, I think I should put your name on here so you can actually type in the comments if you want to put the information in the link and then everybody that's on here that's listening, they'll be able to see what you post. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'll make sure that this video is shared to your page so you'll have the information. I'll share the, the guidelines yes. and then once you have the guidelines, then we can definitely go from there and talk about the guidelines. I'll, and you'll see differences, that's right, so that's... Um, interesting but I can guide you on you know I think you can once you have all the information from the different camps people who agree or disagree like on dairy then you can pick out what works for you personally so I'll do dietary guidelines for Americans I'll do the uh, Harvard's group the alternative healthy uh, eating index and dietary pattern and also the American Institute for Cancer Research AICR they have good stuff, and I would just stick with the literature because there's so many other things, you know. Um, shout out to all, there's so many like African Center things too that I think are awesome, that need to be incap incorporated, that are not unfortunately in academia, um, that people ask me about all the time, so we can talk about whatever information. All right, you guys, so she's going to share the information. We're going to put it right in the video so you guys will get it and you can go over that information and start making healthier lifestyle choices. So, oh, girl, y'all just type in. This the after show. I love y'all. This is funny. Y'all are I talking. love y'all so We much. will do a part two. We will. She said know. she's been waiting so long for this information for Af African-American women, breast cancer survivors, and glad. Congratulations to Rhonda on finishing her. Oh, you're so sweet. Congratulations, yeah. Rhonda. Yes. Yay. Yes. So Dr. Sparkle is going to put the information. I'm going to share the video with her so she can put the information with the guidelines in the, um, the actual um, post so you guys can get that information. And then we will do a part two. So if you have any other questions, you know, post it in the comments so we'll know coming back in with part two exactly what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, just so, run through the questions. Yes. That'll be good. That would be good. So you hear that? Thank you, Dr. Sparkle. Thank you, guys. I feel so welcomed. I'm so black and shiny. I don't always feel welcomed. I'm so happy to be in a space where I feel so welcome. Nothing but love. Nothing, Nothing. but. Nothing but love. Thank you, guys. Remember to tune in every Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to Warriors Talk. Keep thriving and surviving.